Welcome back to the series. This is episode 50 in season four with the Marshall Thundering Herd. Y'all, thank you so much for the love on this series. This has truly been one of my favorite projects to work on so far in my career. You guys are the best. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. We start with recruiting, and we got to talk about QB. Four-star Andrew Adams, number one scrambling quarterback in the country, is vibing with us. We have a 2,000-point lead over second place, and we've locked him in for an official visit in week 10. And we're going to try to line up week 10, that game, as our big recruiting weekend with a ton of complimentary visits. I really like Adams' skill set. He's got great athleticism and wiggle with that 91 elusiveness and mid-80s spin and juke. And the 86 arm strength is good enough to move this martial offense. Remember, we have true freshman Keith Bell, the former five-star, Cam Fancher, and Fuqua who could still come back for his senior year. So we will have plenty of time to work on Adams' development before he takes over. Next, number two wide receiver and high-end five-star Clint Day is a fight we have been in since the beginning, but we are slipping away quickly. He's scheduled for week 10, but we are on lockout watch with Day. But it's not all bad in the wide receiver room. A few weeks ago, we found four-star number six wide receiver Chandler Taylor. He wasn't getting a lot of attention and we decided to get involved. 6'1", 186. He's not as imposing as Day, but with 94 speed, 93 acceleration, and 86 route running, he could absolutely thrive in that slot role that we are seeing Chancellor Bright dominate right now. I really like Taylor as the plan B for Day. O-line. We found one of the bigger gems I've ever seen in this game. Three-star tackle Derek Marcus of Marshall Michigan 6'6 285 it's a great frame to start with and check this out plus nine up to an 81 overall I've never seen a gym like that before 86 strength mid 80s pass block run block and impact block that is a future first rounder if we can fight off Michigan for his services D line four star number three defensive end Ron Davis is a top target in the room for us interesting profile he's 5'11 254 so he's like a little bowling ball and thrives off of his finesse move with an 89 rating right off the bat. He's not really elite at anything else, but he's solid in all of the other defensive metrics, somewhere in the high 70s, low 80s to start everywhere. Definitely an interesting defensive end, but sometimes those smaller dudes have great leverage and can have some success. Number one, strong safety in the country. Five-star Glenn Jordan is a similar situation as Clint Day. Elite prospect, 81 overall, and we have been in on him since the start of the cycle, but we are slowly sliding down the board as the bigger schools start to hone in and get involved in his recruitment. But Jordan would be the perfect fit to take over for Josh Hardiman and then pair him for a few seasons with current stud freshman free safety Kenneth Daniels. Jordan is set to visit week 10, so we'll see. Okay, last guy we got to talk about, and I need some advice from you guys. Four star, Corey Brown, six foot 176, is the number 23 athlete in the country. 78 overall, but I know you see what I see 89 speed, 92 throw power. You just don't see that very often in NCAA 4 team and it can be a deadly combo if it's deployed at quarterback however 86 man 85 zone coverage 86 route running 80 catching this man literally could play corner wide receiver or quarterback for us we're currently in third behind bama and michigan but neither of them have offered brown and we have so we're gonna go after him and let me know in the comments below where do you think i should play him if he comes to marshall such a crazy recruiting profile Marshall, 4-0 and up to number 17 in the country as we get ready for a week six trip to Appalachian State. I wanted to show this screen and I was a little shocked. After starting the year ranked, Penn State fell off a cliff, lost to us in week one and have dropped all four of their games this year. Just great for our strength of schedule. Kent State, ULM and even App State today all of them winless along with Penn State. I just found that so weird and unfortunate for our season. And then of course, Troy, two and two, they've let us down falling outside of the top 10. But shout out to Boston College as our lone remaining premier matchup on the season. We get them next week and it's shaping up to be a really good game. Only one big change in the top 10, Oklahoma, which we will see in a moment with an all timer, they lose and get knocked out of the number four spot. However, biggest game of the week this week, North Carolina hosting Boston College, number eight versus number 10. BC has a chance against UNC and then us next week to really make some noise early in this season. Marshall's up three spots to number 17 after dismantling the previously ranked Illinois Fighting Illini, 48 to nothing, showing we can absolutely hang in a Power 5 conference. But back to Oklahoma, dropping to number 18 after losing in overtime to Georgia Southern. 
at home. Shout out to the Sun Belt Conference in the building. And if you remember last season, we lost to them 34-27 on the road in a big upset. They are frisky. Watch out for Georgia Southern. Ali's Heisman case is still being made. He continues to be listed in the top five. The decision for him to come back for his final season so far is proving to be the right call. Really happy for Rasheen Ali. Okay, App State, every Buckeye fan's favorite David versus Goliath school. You don't know what I'm talking about? Jason Gingell. Out of the hold of Mesco. Good snap. Good hold. And the kick is blocked. Appalachian State has stunned the college football world. One of the greatest upsets in sports history. Oh man, that never gets old. 2007, just glorious. In this reality, however, they are 0-4 sporting C ratings across the board, really struggling to score and defend. Marshall should be the heavy favorite, but never count the Mountaineers out and don't get caught sleeping, especially with the big Boston College game on the horizon next week. Appalachian State playing at the FBS level since 2014 and been in the Sun Belt Conference the entire time. They play their games at Kid Brewer Stadium in front of about 30,000 people. Really excited for this matchup. Marshall sits atop the Sun Belt Group A standings at the moment, but Coastal and Troy are both 1-0, so we got to continue to take care of business in the conference. The Thundering Herd get the ball first from the 25. James Fuqua flicks this one out to Ali. He falls forward. He's got the first. Inside give to Ali on second and 10, pushing forward, he's got five. And an early third and five, and Marshall moves. A little bit loud and rowdy there at App State. Third and 10 after the false start. Fuqua over the middle, Tommy Chambers. 17 yard reception for our slot wide receiver. Marshall converts. A few plays later, second and inches, play action. Fuqua drifts, drifts, keeps the play alive and finds Chambers, 11 yards. Marshall just outside of the red zone on second and three under pressure. Fuqua had nowhere to go. Really nice coverage by App State, and that's a big sack. Marshall at third and 14, launching up the sideline, back of the end zone, looking for Cook. It is swatted down, fourth and 14, opening field goal. And Hayes comes on and boots it through. Hits it from plus 45, and we have our first studio update. It's the North Carolina game, and it is the Tar Heels who take care of business at home. 28-23, so our matchup next week against Boston College loses a little bit of luster. But hey, Tar Heels look legit, and Boston College hung around. App State getting it going on their first possession of the day on second down. Tab Scott going backwards, tried to run the speed option. Hubbard was there. And they're behind the sticks early. Third and 13, they set up the screen. Daniels misses a tackle. Porter breaks it. Folk is there. And Marshall gets a quick three and out on defense. Great field position after the punt. Fuqua on first down. Looking left, finds Hagler. Nice pickup by TE2. Fuqua now drifting. Looking right, Ellis. Ellis, the interception, number 90. Trugging. Oh, my goodness. Really tough play here. Fuqua trying to make the long throw from the opposite hash. He's got Tommy Chambers on the out route. And this guy, number 90, Ellis, from his outside linebacker position. And I've never seen this before. This is a zone blitz. He starts with a hand in the ground. And he, he backpedals 10 yards and gets underneath this throw out to the sideline. I thought there was no chance he was going to get out there to Chambers. Man, that's a heck of a play. Disappointed. Porter up the middle on second down, but Marshall's run D is ready. Sets up a quick third and seven on their quick change after the turnover. Tap Scott hangs in there, delivers a strike over the middle. Brown breaks a tackle. He's got 20 yards, and they're inside the red zone. Second and seven from about the 12 over the middle to Loman. That sets them up with a third and three. Tap Scott stands in there. Larkins is able to fight through it. The tight end, four yards. Now on first and goal, Tap Scott looking right again to Larkins, and he's got it. Three yard touchdown. David Larkins, easily their best player on offense, number 85. He scores the first touchdown of the day in App State. Up early, this is just tough. Jacorian Anderson in man coverage against their best athlete. The App State fans, 0-4, but got the lead at home against the top 25 team. Marshall, can we respond? Sweep left to Ali. Uh-oh. Second and seven. We fake it to Ali. Fuqua, the same exact route. This time he does hit Chambers. He gets this one out in front of Ellis. We were kind of pissed. We wanted to come back to that concept. This is a much better ball. This one out in front of Chambers. He runs 
through it as opposed to on his back hip. Tommy turns it into a first down. Now across the 50, first and 10 out of the backfield. It's Rasheen Ali juking, fighting off a tackle. He's got 14. Third and two, short yardage pickup, and Ali makes the most of it, 12 yards. Now from about the 11-yard line, Fuqua getting out on the edge, looking to the end zone. It's wide for Cook. Second and 10, same type of play, except for we scramble and keep it. Fumble! Oh, my gosh, this ball bounces on the sideline. We're lucky to retain, and on the very next play, Rasheen Ali cashes in from five yards. Yikes, that was sketchy as that ball squirted around, but luckily it bounced our way, and Rasheen Ali is able to turn it into a touchdown. 10-7, to Marshall takes the lead. Tab Scott and the App State offense back out there. Porter with a short run. Turn and give again to Porter up the middle. He finds a good hole. Third and two. Tab Scott looking left. He's going to get hit as he throws Hubbard. It's incomplete, and it's another three and out for Marshall. Really nice sequence there. Another good starting field position. Knowledge McDaniel continues to get us about the midfield stripe, and look at Ali spinning down after 15 yards. A second and 10 run left to Ali, again spinning forward on top of bodies. A few plays later, it's a third and 10 rocker step play action to the end zone. Chancellor Bright is there. 28-yard touchdown. James Fuqua throws a real good ball. The protection holds up just long enough, and Chancellor Bright, in a tight little window, holds on after taking some contact. This is a nice little play. I like this one, and this is pretty much four verticals, but it almost works like a delay. You can see here, it's four on three, and that's just find the guy who's open right there. Bright was the guy. Nicely done, 17-7, Marshall. Turns it up, up 10. Next possession, Porter on second and one. He's gonna fall forward, he's got the first after seven, he should have been tackled in the backfield. Tab Scott, first and 10, looking left. Martin trying to get over to guard, and he does. Nice play, TFL for carry on Martin out of the backfield. And that sets them up with a third and 11 over the middle of the horn. He's gonna get stood up just short of the marker. They're gonna mark him short. And that forced App State to punt. The fans didn't like it. We heard the Boo Birds. Marshall takes over again as Bright breaks a tackle. He's got seven. We do convert on a short first down run. Now we find Chambers over the middle. He's got 13. A few plays later, sweep right to Ali. What a cut. Nice little cut back up the middle. Ali's ran hard already. Now a first and 10 to the sideline. It's Hayden Hagler and Marshall's back inside the red zone. Three minutes to go in the second quarter as this game has been moving along. First and 10, James Fuqua, zone read keeper, and he fooled everyone. Beautifully done, 12-yard touchdown run, and you can't forget that he can use his legs as well. This was really nice. Nobody out there on the side other than the tight end that was the only eligible on that side of the field. We run zone read to the left. Fools everybody. Marshall taking this game in control, 24-7. Tap Scott Knapp State has it back. Flipping it out to Houston on first down. Tab Scott, speed option left. Nice nope. job by Kenneth Daniels to bring down Porter. He's a tough guy. TFL, now a third and two. Tab Scott fakes the run. Looking left, he just throws it away. Third three and out out of four possessions. Marshall's offense ready to come back out. They're doing a nice job moving the ball. And we've got pretty good balance. Ali on the run. I think they expected the pass. They played coverage. 12 yards up the middle. And I know it's inside of two minutes, but hey, if they're gonna be soft, we're gonna keep running it up the middle. Another 10 yard rush for Ali. First and 10, minute 15. Fuqua getting outside of the numbers. Flicking this one up the sideline, it's Chancellor Bright. 30 yard reception and Marshall's in good shape. Minute to go inside the red zone, throwing up the middle. And this one could have been intercepted. Now a second and 10, 55 seconds, going right back to Bright. Another good job by the safety. Man, nice coverage down here in the red zone. Tight area, third and 10. Everybody's guarded. Fuqua under pressure to the end zone. Hello. And no, he gets hit as he throws. He doesn't get anything on this one. And the strong safety, Caden Sullivan, number 26, is able to close on this ball at the pylon. He's got the interception. You can see here, Fuqua getting out on the edge. We were looking to go into the back of the end zone, back pylon, flag play, and he just gets hit as he throws, and it's short. Nice turnover by App State. 44 seconds left. Porter up the middle. He's got one. Marshall looking for the safety down here. 
Tab Scott! Oh my gosh, just barely gets away from Johnson, this freshman defensive end. 30 seconds left. Mayo wants the timeout. Sets up a third and three. Can we get the stop? We can't. Porter up the middle. And that's going to run out the clock for the rest of the first half. Marshall up 24-7. Playing some good ball. He's got to limit the turnovers. Start of the third quarter. Tab Scott running right. Bruh. Daniels unable to shoestring him. Johnson does bring him down. But Porter's got 11 and a good start to the third quarter. App State. Ooh, Andy nope. Johnson in there on the TFL. Minus three. Nice play. A few plays later, it's a third and seven. Taps got under pressure. Somehow gets away from Johnson and then gets hit from behind. That was Kaufman who forced it. Hubbard scoops it. Fumble recovery for Marshall. And they're set up. This is awesome. Jay Sean Kaufman. They were looking to set up the screen. He's blocked by two guys. Then swats a man in the side of the helmet and then hits the quarterback from behind. Heck of an effort play by Kaufman. Man, we love to see it. Jay Sean Kaufman becoming one of the best players on our team on defense. Ali had seven on first. Third and three. It's quick out to the sideline to Chancellor Bright. He makes a move. Nine yards. He's got the first. Now it's a second and ten running left. Ali getting some blocks. Oh, gets tripped up on John Bass's guy, but he's got 12 and a first down. Now on second and ten, we motion him out. Nobody follows him. Fuqua recognizes it, and he throws a strike. Touchdown, 12-yard touchdown pass and reception. Rasheen Ali into the end zone. This was weird. We just motioned him out, expecting someone to follow him, trying to open up the coverage, figure out if it was man or zone. Nobody ran out there with him, so we threw it to him. Marshall up 31-7. to Tab Scott under pressure. First play of the next drive, and Daniels undercuts it as he was looking to go to Larkin, his tight end. And there's true freshman, Kenneth Daniels, who's had an awesome start to his career. He's just kind of in this little trail technique. He felt the corner route coming from the tight end the entire way. And Tabs got through it to us. Kenneth Daniels, got a pick. And here is Marshall right after it. Quick change situation. Fuqua on the edge, not going to force the throw. Looking for a block from Armstrong. Gets a little bit. 14 yards and a first down. Now Marshall's inside the 10, right around the 6. Looking to throw this one in. Brennan Armstrong is there. Seven yard touchdown pass. We've got three touchdowns already. 215 yards for Fuqua. And this is just a gorgeous route. There's Ellis, that outside linebacker who got us earlier. We completely burn him on this one. One foot in and possession. Touchdown, Marshall, 38-7. Five minutes left in the third quarter, and Marshall has opened this one up and on the first play. Almost three straight turnover plays. Man, Price forced the sack. They're able to recover. Tabs got on second and nine. Oh my God, he's running in sand. Oh, he's pretty strong, though. Seven yards, sets them up with a third and two as they turn and give. Watkins had a chance at Porter. Hardeman cleans it up. After converting the first down, it's second and 10 to the sideline. And that one's a little too far. Hardman was lurking, trying to get an INT. Third and 10, tough behind the sticks. Looking left, Tab Scott. Oh, somehow Horn cuts it upfield and we don't get to him. First down. First and 10, looking right. Oh my goodness, Larkin's the tight end. He gets a foot in on this one. And Tab Scott, looking this time up the sideline. And there's Watkins. Nice swat by the true freshman. Motion across the formation. Hardeman pressured him. Oh, my wow. goodness. Jaquan Lohman, 31 yards. But Tab Scott, he is about to get smoked by Josh Hardeman. And he somehow puts the ball in the perfect spot. This is insane. Look at this. Hardeman is in his chest. Somehow he's able to follow through. And look at this ball. Perfect on the sideline for the toe tap. Holy hell. That sets him up with a first and goal from the three. Tap's got keeper. Nope. TFL. Now, second and goal. Looking, looking. He's going to tuck and run. Johnson hits him hard. Now a third and goal. In a pistol. Bunch right. Looking over the middle. It's behind Loman and he's short. It's going to set up a fourth and goal. Tight end motions across. Running left with Porter. Nope. Going nowhere. Our boy Josh Hardman and carry on Martin in there. That's a turnover on downs. Marshall in the shadow of their own goalpost, looking to get it out. Yeah, Ali will do that for you. Second and inches now, running left. Plenty of green space. Kind of falling backwards, but he's got the first. Second and 13 after a sack, looking up the middle, trying to hit Armstrong in the big play. This one's a little underthrown. Sullivan with the, de the, the deflection. Leaves us with a third and 13. 
Not seeing anything open. Looking back across the middle, Matthews can't hang on. Marshall's going to have to punt. Nice, nice little stand there by App State. They get the ball back at midfield, and Taps got under pressure instantly. That's a Rashid Price sack. His second sack of the day as the third quarter is winding down. Taps got, nope, going nowhere this time. It's Kaufman, second sack in a row. Third and forever. Tab Scott under pressure again. Johnson is there. Three straight sacks on this drive as the Marshall D-line starting to take over. Oh, man. That was an awesome sequence. And look, time for the backups as we see Casey Smith is in there. He gets the first carry of the day. Now his second on the toss using that speed. 34. Nice little run by Casey Smith. Keith Bell, the backup quarterback, technically is the third string. We decided to give him a little look over Cam Fancher. He's going to keep it on the outside. Nice run by the freshman. 12 yards by Keith Bell. Now to third and seven. Looking deep over the middle, Hagler gets it swatted down in front of him. Sullivan's had a nice day at safety. But that's going to leave us with a 45-yarder from Kevin Hayes. It is true. 41-7 is our score. The 25, App State with the ball and they're gonna go down another sack as the second team D line is in now. Josh McIntosh and, and thinking back, that was our fourth straight play with the sack. Now fifth, fifth straight play with the sack as it's Elijah Alston and it's third and 19. Tab Scott, I've never seen this before. Six plays in a row. Holy cow, Marshall's defense, unreal, App State. Looking terrible as Smith breaks off a beautiful 19-yard run. A few plays later, it's a third and eight. Bell, can he do something with his arm? He's looking, he's looking. Nice coverage downfield, cuts it back up inside. Keith Bell gets 10 and extends our possession. Nice conversion. And on first and goal, it's a jump cut by Smith, and that is beautifully done. Casey Smith, his first career touchdown in Huntington. Quick feet. Yeah, nice little move there, and he's into the end zone. Seven sacks on the day, an interception, a forced fumble for this Marshall D, and six straight plays with a sack. I've literally never seen that before. First and 10, can we get seven in a row? Somehow he gets this one out of his hand, but it's incomplete. They need to just get a different quarterback in the game because my goodness, Tapscott's taking a beating. He throws a nice one there to convert the first down, second and seven. Porter gets hit by Jackson, the backup linebacker. Nice play there. And it's a third and seven, minute 50 to go. Let's see, looking right at Larkins, he drops it. And you know what? That's going to end up in a punt, and that is the end of this one. Marshall runs out the rest of the clock, and they win it. Beautifully done by the boys. Always good to get a conference road win, especially in dominant fashion, as Ali is our player of the game. App State headed back to the locker room looking sad. 48-7 is our final score, 469 yards of total offense to holding them under 200. Check this out, 32 rushing attempts, 32 yards. Run D was insane today. We held them to 155 passing yards, 6 of 15 for 40% on third downs. So a really nice job by the Marshall D all day long. We weren't super clean on offense. We had a few turnovers. We fumbled the ball out of bounds, had a, had a turnover right before the end of the half. Not the cleanest day on offense, but we didn't need to do much. The Marshall D was so dominant that it didn't really matter. So we get the big win, conference road win. Let's get it. 17 and 32, 213, three touchdowns and two interceptions on 53% passing. Pretty pedestrian, right? That's a pretty pedestrian stat line for a guy like Fuqua. He gets sacked twice. It's kind of weird, but he didn't need to do very much. So that's always nice. Tap Scott on the other side, 16 of 27, 155, a touchdown and a pick. Slightly higher passing percentage in terms of completions, but seven sacks. I had never seen anything like that before from our defense. 144 yards rushing, one touchdown, our player of the game, Rasheen Ali. Casey Smith, we gave him the second chance opportunities today. He actually had a really nice day. 7.2 yards per carry and a touchdown, his first ever. Fuqua, five carries, 20 yards, and he gets into the end zone as well. Receiving, Chancellor Bright continues his hot streak. Four catches, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Long of 30, he's been really, really a bright surprise, no pun intended. Ali, four catches 33 yards adds his trip into the end zone and Brennan Armstrong only two catches but had that beautiful one on the sideline he gets into the end zone 
Price led the way, six tackles, five for Folk Johnson and Hubbard. Not a lot happening on defense today in terms of time on the field. Two sacks apiece for McIntosh, Price, Alston, Kaufman, and Johnson also add one, and I believe that might have been Johnson's first career as well. And Kenneth Daniels, the true freshman. Couple true freshman impact players on defense. He gets an INT. Really, really nice day by the boys. Larkins, the tight end, is their top player. Four catches, 36 yards, and a score. Sullivan, the safety, five tackles in the pick. He had a nice day. Price, five tackles, two tackles for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble. And Ali does what Ali does. Week 7, we advance forward. Coach Palmer up to a level 6, the defensive coordinator, as it is officially Boston College week. And as we look at the team news, not great. Clint Day, the wide receiver, has locked us out. So has Mike Thomas, the center, who I didn't show you at the beginning. We only get one break the lock each year, so we got to figure out who we want to use this on. Here is the Palmer skill tree. He's going to throw one more point into no fly zone, continue to boost the coverage ratings for the back seven. The coaches poll after week six, and we see North Carolina up to number five. They're doing a heck of a job, 4-0. They get the win against Boston College. And as we scroll down to number 11, it looks like the ghost of App State might still be around. Number two, Michigan goes down. It's our friends, the Fighting Illini, now back in the top 25 at number 25. Four. They get it done on the road. Great win, and I think by process of elimination, that just means we would have beat Michigan 58 to nothing since they lost by 10 to Illinois and we killed them 48 to nothing. I don't make the rules, okay? That's just how it is. Marshall up to number 13. Big matchup next week, Boston College. They hang inside the top 15, sliding from 10 to 15. They're up next. And of course, our matchup next week, top 15, highest profile game of the year. BC still looks great, and BC and Marshall are both 1-2 and two in total defense and rush defense. So we will see who breaks first next week. Be sure to like and subscribe. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.